Horizon Chess Home Switch Reacts, and this is Are You a Dream of the Universe? by Channel Kazgazad in a nutshell. Absolutely everything you think about yourself, the universe could be an illusion. Ah, all right. This is a really good topic, right? I mean, obviously, this is like fun thought experiments. Uh, basically, it's really hard to answer any of this, even if it's true, right? There's a reason why science never answers why, basically, just answers how. Why does gravity exist? I mean, it's a property that exists. Like, why? Why does space time continue exist? Like, why is that really hard? So, this is one of those things. Like, uh, I like the thought, like, okay, all of this could be real. I could be real. I'm talking in a mic. I'm looking in the camera. This all could be real. Or I could be a guy sitting in a corner in an asylum, and this is all just a dream of mine. That's also a possibility, right? It's really hard to, because, you know, you could think of everything. If you think you feel pain, you could feel pain in this thought, right? I mean, imagine the dream you have, dream, nightmares, whatever. You panic in that dream and nightmare if you get hurt. I mean, obviously, when you wake up, you're like, oh, I wasn't really hurt. But in the dream and nightmare, you don't know, right? There's something like that. Now, basically, I don't know what specific thing is talking about, but basically, it's like, are you real or not? Is this a dream or reality? I mean, it's really hard to know, right? You can know that in the current setting, whatever this might be, we exist, right? That's all you know. I exist, I can think, and everything else is just open to interpretation because we can think, we know that. Okay, this is where the questions come from. Like, it's the, you know, uh, freedom of real thing, freedom of choice real thing, because there were some studies uh, done about the brain that was like kind of pointing towards that might not be real. Like, things we do might be pre-chosen, which is kind of like a scary thought. Like, well, what are we supposed to do with that, right? One thing we have is like freedom of choice. When that taken away, how, how are we supposed to think of that? But then all the wormhole open, the metaphorical, right? Because how are you going to treat criminals there if they are supposed to do that? It's really hard. So, yeah, the dream thing is really insane when you really think about it. It just like panics you at a certain point, right? But yeah, it's, it's going to be, you know, good thought experiment, I guess. Remember, people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe. So, I know which type of to react to more. Check out the reaction. There's a link in the season. And yeah, let's do it. Absolutely everything you think about yourself and the universe could be an illusion. As far as you yep. know, you are real and exist in a universe that was born 14 billion years ago and that gave rise to galaxies, stars, the Earth, and finally you. Or Except, not. Except, maybe not. <laughs> you may actually not exist for real, but be the dream of a dead universe. You and everything you think exists. Crazy as it sounds, this may be an unavoidable consequence of our best scientific theories about the universe. Okay, this is a bit much. Let's start at the beginning. Yeah, but dream is a construct of our brain, an actual combination of mass that has this kind of a thought process, how brain works. Is galaxy a whole universe like that? Universe is not one connected thing. How can universe have a dream of us? Like, I don't know. Maybe we might find a properties like that. I don't know. We need to understand three concepts for this idea to make sense. One, the arrow of time. What distinguishes the past from the future? Put a drop of red ink into a glass of water and you see the ink spread until it fills the container, mm. but never the opposite. Colored water where ink spontaneously concentrates oh, yeah. and becomes a drop at the surface again. Time always seems to flow in the direction in which the ink spreads. Then it's so wacky to see, right? Like, what was that movie recently? Tenet? Was it Tenet, right? <laughs> where you see people actually going in reverse, it's like, you, you know, that's not the first time you've seen that in any movie or something. But every time you see it, it just feels like weird and absurd. That's how our mind and we are tuned to how things are supposed to be, for us at least, our primal brain. Because anything out of ordinary or opposite of ordinary is just going to panic you, like, how, what, what the fuck? That, that's what your response going to be. But if you take a microscope, all you will see will be a swarm of molecules colliding at random. There are no rules, no forwards and backwards. Every individual motion that happens can occur in reverse. But we perceive a sort of arrow of time that makes things happen in one direction. How does this phenomenon occur? Well, this arrow of time is not actually fundamental, but a matter of probability. When ink molecules spread to fill a glass, there are many different slots of space they can occupy, and therefore many different possibilities to combine them. And just like your chances of winning the lottery grow the more tickets you have, 
the probability that ink molecules will end up filling the glass is much higher than the probability that they'll concentrate in just one spot. Yeah. So it's not that the ink forming a drop again is forbidden by the laws of physics, it's just extremely unlikely. To see it, you'd have to wait about 10 to the power of 100 sextillion years, a one followed by 100 sextillion zeros. If you had this much time to spare, eventually, by pure random chance, you'd see a red blob form again. Actually, with enough time, you could see any shape forming, like, for example, a small, red, soggy brain. OK, let's move on to idea two. Two, the far future of the universe. Our universe was born 14 billion years ago in the Big Bang. It expanded and evolved to give rise to the myriads of galaxies and things. In other words, the universe is kind of a glass of water with a lot of ink doing stuff. It ah. has an arrow of time. But the universe is not a static glass. It seems to be getting bigger at an ever-increasing speed because of dark energy. Basically, everything in it is getting more and more diluted. In about 100 trillion years, the last star will die. Then, few interesting things will happen for the next few decillions, vantillions, and googles of years. Eventually, the universe will be a dark place fully dominated by dark energy, a rapidly expanding ball of pure space, almost devoid of matter. You might think that this would lead to the ultimate death of everything, but dark energy has one last surprise for you. Okay. In a universe dominated by dark energy, space expands so dramatically that it creates a cosmic horizon around you, a border beyond which nothing will ever be able to reach you, not even light. So for every practical purpose, the universe has become a glass of finite size about 36 billion light years wide, surrounded by an impassable cosmic horizon. Such a universe glass is basically a giant black hole turned inside out. <laughs> we know that due to quantum effects, all black holes emit a tiny amount of particles, yeah. a phenomenon known as Hawking radiation. And so does our inside out black hole. Hell. In the end, this radiation will fill the universe glass with particles again. At this point, so far in the future that giving you a number has no more meaning, we've reached the true final state. The universe has now become a closed box full of particles at an extremely low but finite temperature. And since they have a temperature, they undergo random motions. Or in other words, a glass filled with water and ink and an infinite amount of time ahead. Things are about to become interesting again. 3. Typing monkeys and fake universes Eternity is a long, long time. Yeah. So now, even the most extremely unlikely things can happen. <laughs> the fluctuating particles are bumping into each other over and over and over again, creating every combination of particles that's possible. They're like a monkey typing at random on a typewriter. Almost all of the time it types gibberish. But with enough time, eventually it will write the first acts of Hamlet. And with even more time, the complete works of Eminem. If ink in our universe glass generates any random arrangements of particles, what could they be? Well, a spontaneous fluctuation could give rise to a planet, or to a galaxy, or even to a lot of them. So maybe our universe has already ended. Uh, I love this. Like people say the same thing about the uh, multiverse here. Basically, same thing applies here. Like given enough time, any combination is possible. So why not this? Yeah, it makes sense. It's really hard for us to understand eternity, right? Or you know, infinite time or something. We say infinite because, you know, we don't have a point to say, but let's just imagine way too long of a time, right? Now, during that time, between that time, anything can happen, right? And any combination of things can happen. Oh, this is a good, really good point for that uh, th thought, I guess. I never thought of it in that way, but yeah, this could kind of like, you know, explain continuing of the universes. Long after, like you know, how it becomes a big bear, how it goes. Like, I I had a problem with like if everything turns dark, if everything dies, only dark matter is remain. How is it gonna basically restart if it's gonna do it, right? People have this theory like universes die and reborn again. Like this could be one of the ways it could happen. And all we see around us is a pop-up universe. Not a universe that evolved from a Big Bang, but one that fluctuated into existence by pure chance. Yeah. And that, like the drop of ink, will only exist for a while before dissolving again. Being random, pop-up universes could be similar to ours, but with funny glitches. In some of these universes, dinosaurs are riding snails. In another, Damn. stars are made of blueberries. In another, you're wearing a funny hat. 
scientists in such universes wouldn't understand those glitches, so maybe the greatest mysteries of physics are just nonsense bugs of our pop-up universe. But not all possible fluctuations of our dead universe have the same probability of occurring. Smaller fluctuations are much more probable than bigger ones. Yeah. A planet is more likely than a galaxy. But you know what's even way more likely? A human brain. Are you actually just a brain? You think, therefore, you exist. But what else do you truly know? In the mm. end, your brain is just interpreting signals from your senses and creating a world that you experience. So technically, you could be just your brain that thinks the world is real. Yeah. And if we follow the logic of the ink in the universe class, in particular, you could be a disembodied brain that, just by chance, emerged in a dead universe with your complete set of knowledge and memories. This is a pretty bizarre idea, but if we do the maths, it's kind of pretty solid. Let's compare. Have we gone past bizarre when it when we talked about infinite possibilities? So yeah, literally any possibility you can think of, based on you know any kind of basic physics, can make sense. We are talking about infinite possibilities here. <laughs> like damn, this is kind of similar to you know uh, the the famous thing like you could be sitting in the corner in an asylum and everything you probably imagine. This is kind of similar to that. But yeah, again, that thought is kind of scary when you think about it. The number of brains inside bodies in a living universe with a number of naked brains in a dead universe. Yeah, let's <laughs> go a really brain, big you know, none and of imagine this is that a total of 100 quadrillion humans will live around Earth, and that the same amount of people will live around every star in the universe. If we add this together, we get about 10 to the power of 41 brains inside bodies that will exist. However, in a dead universe that has had enough time to explore all possible fluctuations and that will exist forever, the number of naked brains that would emerge is well infinite yeah so the probability that you're a floating brain is not only vastly larger than the probability that you're a real human it's so inconceivably larger that we can't even meaningfully quantify the difference i mean how do you compare uh, a number yeah. to infinity so are you a floating brain that exists i mean it's like what we are is one possibility what we can be is an infinite possibility so there's a high chance we are not what we think we are and we are something that we probably can be i mean stats is one thing is really hard for us to really process but yeah it could be we're talking about could be here thought process so yeah probably not probably all this is real let's be honest but yeah this like when when you talk about chances yeah there's a high chance we're just a floating brain <laughs> that's just fucked up exists for one moment in time then basically forever passes and then you exist for another moment in time maybe not even in that order maybe your life happens backwards and you just don't notice. Oh God. Maybe you've lived trillions of That's times That's what deja already. vu is. <laughs> Are you the dream of a dead universe? Really? Like, really? Well, probably not. First of all, there are a few loopholes. For example, dark energy could behave completely differently from what we think yeah. today and lead us to another future. Or maybe our dead universe will be too motionless to allow the creation of brains even with infinite time. Not to mention dark energy, dark matter, whatever, has nothing to do with normal matter, right? It doesn't interact in any fucking way. So assuming that anything close to what we are or what we have, uh, you know, it, it can have a possibility of in the future, it's kind of like hard because it's, it doesn't even come close to being same. It doesn't even interact, basically. Or maybe the universe will end up dying in another way. Our understanding of the cosmos doesn't have a solid enough foundation for anyone to worry if they're real or not. Yeah. Loopholes aside, if you were a fluctuating brain, all the laws of physics stored in your brain would have originated at random and shouldn't bear any relation to the real world. But we just used those laws to prove that you're a floating brain. So even if you believe that you are a floating brain, you'd have to admit that you have no good reason to believe that you are actually a floating brain. Hmm, okay, so this... Yeah, like I said, that's a really hard thing to understand. Like, look, imagine you're going to walk outside tomorrow and go to a shop and come back. What are the chances you're going to walk and you're going to be fine compared to all the tragedy that happens to people all the time? Like, one outcome is you're going to be fine. Second outcome is you're going to be hit by a car. Third outcome is you're going to be hit by, I don't know, electricity or from electric power, electric or something. If you list out all the possibility the high chances that you're probably not going to be fine, right? And yet, probably going to be fine, right? So stats is one of those things like probability says that the floating brain is real, but it's probably not. And like I said, you know, dark matter, dark energy thing, we are taking a lot of, we are making a lot of assumptions, and those assumptions themselves might not be real. 
So yeah, this is all based on not that solid thing. The foundation of all this is not that solid. But yeah, it could be. That's that's the terrifying thought. It could be. The tree trip might teach us something about our theories about the universe. But in the end, it's just a really weird exercise in what you can do with physics. An exercise of what brains and bodies are able to think about. Yeah. So don't worry. You're not a dream of the dead universe. And even if you are, you can't do shit about it. <laughs> At Kurtzk's art, we love discussing topics like Boltzmann brains. Yeah. Even if you are, what you gonna do about it? It is what it is, man. I'll live it. Watch Netflix. Who cares? All right. <laughs> All right, well, that was Are You a Dream of the Universe by Chana Kaskar. This was really good, man. I loved this one. I, I hope it does more of a thought process. Like, you know, whole philosophy element of science is really fucking awesome. He should do more. I, I know he's done quite a few of them. I'm very sure reacted to them as well. But it's really fun. There was one thing about, uh, I don't know, I forgot about what was that. But, uh, you know, I forgot the name. What was that? I'm pretty sure it's one of the famous videos from him, but it just basically talks to a higher being or, being or something. I'm pretty sure I reacted like two, three years ago. But yeah, that was good too. I like whenever the philosophy type of element to it. Right, well, if you like my next channel, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.